What I'm going to do next really is to give you insight of what I think about the market now. There will be some charts that I'm going to show you that it's not, you know, it's not an inducement to trade. And the usual disclaimer, it is uh, this seminar or this presentation is only for educational purposes only. All right, so um, let's start all right, with a chart that all of us are familiar with and all of us are excited about. And that is the Singapore uh, FTSE STI index. And um, the reason why I'm showing you this one uh, instead of the MSCI index is because, you know, Singaporeans are familiar with this. But STI index is a mirror uh, or Simski is a mirror of STI index. So if the STI index is bullish, Simski tend to be bullish. Okay. So... You guys, if you have been on my chat group, right, you would know that I started um, getting bullish on the, the banks, the UOB and DPS. So I've been calling a buy on the banks uh, because of the technicals um, and they were getting stronger. And therefore, you know, you understand that the bank makes a big part of our STI index. It's the constituent stock, you know, STI index. And therefore, when I believed all right, the bank is turning up, I also got bullish in the STI index and also Simski, all right? So, so I was like uh, gluing my eyes on Simski and you could see the STI index, all right? Um, you know, one of the worst performer, performing index uh, in Asia, if not the world. Okay, um, you can see that, you know, it has been on a protracted downtrend. And this is where we are seeing some live here. You saw that, I mean, we have a first break, right? Above the trend line and I had a trade plan for it. And uh, when it broke the trend, uh, my target was, the, you know, this trend line down here, which is about, um, sorry, uh, 25,005, 25,010, which was hit yesterday. So, and, and that actually coincided with the 50 day moving average. So today, the SDI index showed a very bullish price action, right? It broke above the very strong resistance of 2516, all right? So it broke above 2516, and that to me, it's a bullish price action, all right? And also for the first time, it stayed above the 50-day moving average uh, since uh, July 20 uh, this year. Okay, so it stayed below for the last couple of months and today uh, we are seeing a first sign of life. And so yesterday I was watching it and I was turning bullish on STI and what I did was I went and I bought a million uh, about 1.5 million of uh, shares of the MSG or M MSCI uh, DLC seven times long, all right? So you could see my holding period, right, uh, over the weekends, okay? Um, you know, I bought some on Thursday, bought some on Friday. I took uh, the profits, all right? Well, 90% of the profits and I made like close to $8,000. All right, so that's why I said, uh, you know, yesterday I made the, one of the um, major volumes in, uh, in this DLC. For DLC, the traders, if you think of trading DLC, the most important thing, uh, all right, is uh, getting your technical picture right, okay? You, you got to be strong in your technicals. And, uh, you know, fundamental, not so much because fundamental sometimes, you know, is stretched over a long period of time, uh, you know, but technicals, fairly short term indicator uh, that will help you profit from a DLC in a one, two day time frames, maybe, you know, uh, within the contract period time frames. Okay, so that's how it works there. Okay, so today I want to talk 
to you a little bit about uh, my insight uh, into the U.S. presidential election, which is going to take place on the 3rd of November, about um, a couple of weeks from now. And this is the hot button issue in the mind of traders and investors now. Okay, so, and, and we know that, uh, you know, as the, the market approaches the election date, things will get pretty wild, right? The market volatility is going to increase, prices is going to swing. Okay, so, well, just uh, yesterday we had Trump diagnosed from, for COVID, you know, and then he went to the hospital, he came back out again. And when he went to the hospital, you know, the, the market tanked. And even before that, we had the first presidential debate. Uh, the market tanked during Asia hour, picked up uh, during the actual trading hours on the Wall Street. So, so we could already got a, we have already got a glimpse of how, how volatile the market can get, all right, as we approach election date. All right, so... Biden is uh, widening his gap, all right, uh, in the latest poll, you could see that. So, so the most important question for us, all right, is to be, you know, having an uh, opinion of who is going to win. And therefore, from that opinion, we form our investment strategy. Okay, so I think uh, as of now, you know, if nothing happens, it looks like it's a Biden's game. Okay, so Trump has fallen behind uh, Biden. Joe Biden, all right, uh, he is also preparing uh, for a long legal battle. All right, he has uh, engaged uh, some of the best lawyers in town just in case Do Donald Trump's. Uh, Threat claiming that uh, the mill in mill box election uh, is uh, rigged, and in the event that uh, the whole uh, decision of who's going to win uh, goes to the Supreme Court. Okay, so so he is already getting prepared, and let's take a look at the stock market returns in presidential cycles, and so so typically, right? Typically. Um, from statistics, right, over the so many presidential cycle, uh, average return for years, year four, right, of presidential cycle for S&P, okay? So this is a statistics um, taken over, like, uh, let me see, from uh, uh, year 1928 to year 2019, okay? So that's how uh, market will move as as it gets closer to the presidential election uh, date. And a couple of months uh, before, and that is like, um, you know, if the election is in November, uh, typically starting from July, all right, to end of the year, the market will move in a range bound trading. It's not getting, it's going to get any higher, but it's, it's very volatile and it trades within a range, which means, right, what it means for traders like us or investors is that you don't want to write or you don't want to hope for a trend to be formed. So the chances of a long-term trend forming, right, is going to be, um, you know, remote, right? Which means your DLC probably is good because, you know, uh, when market is volatile and it trades within the range, it's good for uh, short-term trading. So, so, so this is a period uh, which, right, if you make some money, all right, try to take some profits because chances of, a, a well-defined and prolonged downtrend is not going to happen uh, or, or until we know who uh, will be the president of the United States. Okay, uh, after the third of November, and and that when uh, things will be much uh, clearer. Okay, so um, so I think that's uh, the most important takeaway from this slide. Uh, and um, if you see, all right, so this is a statistic of S&P annual stock return from uh, uh, 1928 to 2016, okay? So on the election year, right, so this is the typical, you know, returns that you will get 
but uh, towards the last three months, like I said, it's a good year. Normally on election year, you get good returns, but towards the end, the, towards the, um, you know, the, the, the three months uh, uh, leading to uh, the election, things might not be things might not look too good okay so so this is the returns all right uh, six months before presidential election and you know history show that the stock market the economy are key indicator of who wins a presidential election and uh, that must um, you know ring a bell to you uh, the u.s economy is in one of its deepest uh, recession since the great depression okay so you know chances of Biden winning, uh, I think is a lot more. Okay, um, so the stock market hits uncertainty. And, um, you know, uh, if you have been uh, listening to me on Telegram, you know, you know, I was like a little bearish, uh, you know, a, a, a month ago in the market when um, the uh, Wall Street indices that fell below the 50 day moving average all right and but then about last week all right i started getting early last week i started getting bullish on the market if you have heard me on the market chat primarily because all right the stimulus package the fiscal stimulus package was uh, you know uh, tabled again by nancy pelosi uh, which is the house speaker and it has Trump give his blessing, all right, uh, to that um, you know to to uh, to that uh, proposed uh, fiscal stimulus package. So there was so the hope came back. So you know initially you know uh, a lot of people have given up the hope of uh, the House passing the fiscal stimulus bill uh, before the. the the election, all right. So so now the hope is back, and tonight they are going to talk some more right so they are still in talks and um you know an agreement will come anytime soon it could be tonight it could be this week uh but bear in mind that uh you know the senate going to recess on the ninth and uh by end of this week the senate going to recess uh and if there is no agreement uh the senate would have to be called back from recess and that could be unlikely so after this week in the changes of them you know putting a deal together the house uh, proving that bill will be remote and therefore you know we will uh, expect uh, the market to be not supported by any of this uh, very key uh, market moving events okay so so watch for this week all right uh, and that is why you know to now as of, as of now you see the the dow jones are still moving up uh, you know a lot of people are very hopeful all right that uh, the, the the deal will be clinched and uh, if the deal is clinched you know it'll be good for stocks and it would be good for gold okay so that's why you see gold moving up and uh, you know and, and the Dow Jones, uh, it was negative a while ago and it's turning uh, up now. All right. And uh, if a party change, uh, for example, if Biden wins, you know, from history, when a party change, uh, the economy tend to not perform that well. Okay. And so that is why, you know, after the first presidential debate, the market sort of got a hunch that Biden might win because Biden was doing a little better than Trump in the first presidential debate. And therefore, before uh, even the Wall Street started trading, the futures were trading like uh, 300 points to 400 points down. Okay. So, uh, so this is um, Bloomberg's, all right, version of sectors that will benefit if the Republican or Donald Trump were to win. Uh, and primarily, if it the weightage is 100%, uh, a lot of weighting will go to the healthcare, followed by financial, followed by industrials, okay? So, so these are the sectors that will benefit if Republican win. And also, you know, energy, but energy only makes like 10% of it. And, um, you know, so far, Donald Trump's stock, right, is not doing as well, okay? These are Donald Trump's stocks. Uh, it is in, um, you know, sort of uh, his uh, uh, basket of stocks that uh, Bloomberg has identified, all right? So these are the stocks that uh, are like, uh, you know, market perceived as a Trump beneficiary or they call it the Trump 
stock basket and they are not doing uh, too well. And, um, you know, if the Democrats were to win, all right, uh, the healthcare, all right, will be the top sector to get in the industrial and and uh, the utilities, all right. So you got to watch utilities and you got to watch uh, consumer discretion sectors. Okay, so those are the sectors that is going to do well. Okay, so healthcare, industrial, sort of common between uh, Democrats and Republican win, but uh, utilities and uh, consumer discretion stands out if uh, Biden were to win. And Biden's basket of stocks seems to be doing a lot better. And if you observe, all right, Biden's basket of stocks, right, you know, uh, a lot of it is made up of alternative energy stocks like Sunrun, like, uh, you know, like uh, Clearway Energy, uh, you know, like uh, Brookfield Renewable Partners, Okay, so, so those are, are, are stocks that, uh, you know, uh, are in the renewable uh, energy se uh, sectors, okay? And uh, so, so, so these are the stocks that um, the market perceives will do well if Biden wins, okay? And uh, as we near, come nearer to the election date, you expect, all right, uh, more volatility and therefore uh, you could expect, uh, you know, the dollar uh, index uh, to strengthen, okay. Um, so, so what I, I, I suspect is that after uh, we get uh, the uh, fiscal stimulus approved, all right, the market will run up, gold prices will run up, uh, dollar index will come down. Uh, for now, but the minute you know the bill is passed, and then as we get nearer to the election, dollar will start moving up. Uh, uh, volatility uh, was will, will heighten again, and therefore uh, you know you might want to be considering buy, buying some volatility index. Okay, uh, so you know like I said, the three months before election usually around about the September, October period, all right, market volatility will increase and therefore we should expect a stronger uh, dollar, okay? And um, all right, uh, so, so here I want to talk about um, the technical picture, okay, of NASDAQ. So, so things are getting bearish here, you know, as you can see, and if you have been following some of my uh, technicals uh, charts, all right, that I posted online, you know, I caught the market top somewhere off here, uh, and then the market tank, uh, as I predicted correctly. And then, you know, it was turning a little bit ugly here when it broke below the 50-day moving average. And, you know, when um, Nancy Pelosi put the fiscal stimulus um, uh, proposal on the table again, the market started, you know, moving up again. All right. So, so like I said before, you know, the market, you know, moves a lot, all right, uh, with liquidity and it's all really about uh, printed money and all that will really come or get a boost, all right, if the fiscal stimulus of between like uh, 2 to 2.5 million, all right, that's on the table, all right, and uh, but then uh, what I think I still have a target for Nasdaq. So if Nasdaq hits eleven eight hundred, all right, uh, we could have a very huge resistance there. So so look here. I mean, Nasdaq is trading uh, above the fifty day moving average, and uh, things are looking rosy again. But I I believe that the upside is capped about at eleven thousand eight hundred. I, I, I also believe that uh, when the fiscal stimulus is, is announced and approved, it could be a sell into news. All right. So the technical picture looks the same, all right, for uh, similar, like uh, uh, between Dow Jones and NASDAQ. And if you look, see my trade plan, right, you know, so this trade plan, you know, correctly predicted uh, the top, all right, uh, of uh, of Dow Jones and it correctly predicted the bottom here. And, um, you know, I believe that uh, uh, the trip plan is still working. Uh, and I have a target for Dow Jones at 28,500, all right? So 28,500 is where we could get some uh, resistance. 
are right, coming in. So watch that 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 figure. All right. So at the moment, short term things uh, get is uh, looks bullish. Dow Jones is. Uh, above the 50 days moving average. All right, so some of, for this week, these are the, some of the key economic data. And, um, you know, especially uh, Wednesday, tomorrow we get FOMC minutes. And I think that's something that a lot of people are looking at uh, what the Fed has got to say. All right, the Chinese economic data this Friday is crucial. Look out for it, Kaising Chinese Service PMI. Don't, don't. 